Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Byron. I am the Reseller and International Division Manager here at Double Radius, and we want to thank you for joining us today as we host Alpha Wireless for today's Lunch and Learn on Innovative Antenna Solutions. Um, we asked Alpha to make this presentation today because we see their range of high-quality antennas as a good product for resellers to offer. The idea of today's Lunch and Learn is to give you a portfolio overview and then to also give you a chance to ask whatever questions you might have. So speaking from Alpha Wireless today, we have Sam Hall and Tim Sill. Sam is the VP of Carrier Sales for North America, and Tim is the VP of Technology for North America. Uh, before I turn it over to Sam and Tim, I just want to go over a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, first, uh, if you would, as you have questions, go ahead and put them in the questions tab in your sidebar there, and we will try to address them as we go. Uh, Sam and Tim like for it to be a bit of an um, interactive uh, conversation, so feel free to you know, ask any questions that they have and they'll work them in. And then lastly, at the end, if you don't mind, please take a few seconds. Uh, we have a quick survey that will pop up. So if you'll just hang on and answer those for us, uh, we would appreciate that. And so with that, we'll go ahead and jump right in. I'll hand it over to Apple Wireless and just get started. Thank you, Byron. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking time on your Friday. We greatly appreciate your participation. Uh, my name is Sam Hall. I'm a VP of Carrier and uh, and uh, neutral host sales for US, well actually really for North America. Um, and I also have uh, responsibility really for everything going on up in Canada. So if you haven't heard of Alpha Wireless before, uh, we are a Irish antenna manufacturer and we're gonna introduce a little bit about ourselves and then about some of our product sets today. Oops, sorry. There we go. So um, we are uh, we were founded in 2007. So we've been around for a while. We're based out of Valley British, uh, County Leash, in Ireland. You can tell I'm not from Ireland. I'm uh, calling in from Kansas City, which is where I'm located. Uh, but we are an international company. Uh, we've got multiple customers uh, in multiple countries. Uh, we tend to uh, do quite a bit of work with Tier One operators, but we also work with really every every kind of facet of uh of the industry out there so we've got customers who are you know in the healthcare arena in mining we've got resellers distributors we've got tier one two and three so we're we're kind of a uh spread wide across our our industry in general um, we are consider ourselves a vendor neutral uh innovation partner so we will talk a little bit more about our innovation side of things we're we're a little different than some of the other manufacturers that are out there, antenna manufacturers. We we uh, uh, are a bit smaller, and we like taking on the, the challenge of uh, custom design uh, solutions, and so uh, that's really one of our strong suits. And and uh, my uh, my peer, Tim Sill, who's our VP of, of Technology for North America, will be talking about some of that, uh, some of the things that we've done unique to um, you know, to us and to our customers. And so we'll be uh, we'll talking about that. Uh, we do have a question panel in your uh, in in your options. So if you have a question while we're talking, um, feel free to enter it in there. We are going to open up the uh, do an open mic at the end if there's uh, questions that you want to wait uh, for and uh, and talk about those at the end. We'll, we should have time at that point. So thanks again for joining. And uh, we'll we'll step into the into the overall presentation. So Alpha Wireless, uh, just kind of a, as a quick overview, the things that we consider that we're considering when we're out here designing products and working with our customers, our aesthetics, um, kind of primary issue these days, as we have a proliferation of, of antennas being installed, and really, especially with 5G, it's it's going to become a a, a bigger and bigger issue. Uh, so we're always concerned about how these uh, devices are deployed, how they look, um, whether or not they catch the eye, and whether or not you know they kind of add to the visual pollution of stuff that's out there or are, are hidden from view. And we'll talk about some of the concealment things that we're doing a little later. Uh, size is always important uh, from a 
overall uh, where we live, there's oftentimes uh, requirements that communities put in place as to what they want to see. There are places that don't want to see anything that looks like an antenna. And so uh, as an antenna manufacturer, we have to take those things into account and make sure that we're actually uh, designing products that can be deployed. Uh, performance is, is a key thing. Obviously, if you're buying solutions, you want solutions that are going to give you be the highest performing product uh, if you can if you can afford them. And the good news is is that we build really the highest performing products out there, uh, but we're very much uh, cost competitive with with the rest of the market. And then lastly, deployment matters. Um, the cost of the antenna itself is usually a very small price. Uh, or component of the overall cost of a, of a network deployment. The actual cost of, of uh, receiving permits and zoning and all of that is a much higher cost um, in the overall scheme of things. Also, the, the time it takes to deploy is, is really important. And so those are things that we are constantly looking at in, and uh, doing innovation around. So we're gonna talk about our, our different product families and, and we're just covering this real briefly uh, just to make you aware of the fact that we do have products uh, and we will go into, into these uh, a bit more, but we have canisters. Canisters, if you're not familiar with those, would be a single, it looks like a pole basically, but inside that pole would be the equivalent of nine, uh, potentially nine or even 12 antennas. So multi-band, multi-port, um, high gain antennas, but all inside a 16 inch diameter uh, canister. So the canister could be anywhere from, you know, a little bit less than two meters or a little less than six feet and upwards of, of, you know, eight or nine feet, depending on the mix of uh, solutions that are, that need to be put inside. Uh, concealment are solutions that don't look like antennas um, and might include internal to them, uh, the radios, the cabling, power distribution, all of those things, trying to keep that from being uh, an eyesore. Um, panel antennas are ones that we're probably familiar with. Uh, these are the things that you most often see on cell towers. Uh, those would be panel antennas. And then lastly, our small cell family of products. We have a very wide array of small cell solutions. We're gonna just talk briefly about it, but uh, we're, we'd like to make you guys aware of the fact that uh, we have a broad array of products. And so if you're looking to do small cell deployments uh, pr a, a, across pretty much any spectrum band, we have solutions in that space. So uh, jumping into uh, the overall, uh, you know, as um, our customers are, are thinking through what do I need and how do I need to engage uh, and, and design my my network. These are some of the things that uh, that we that we're familiar with. And so I'm going to ask Tim to take over and uh, just walk us through some of these basic uh, basic considerations, and then we'll uh, move on into some of the product sets. So take Tim, take it away. Thanks, Sam. Uh, again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, like Sam uh, was talking about, you know, when you start looking at wireless networks, you need to uh, take into a different uh, a bunch of different options that impact and influence your designs whether it's for <clears throat> private LTE networks if it's for uh, mobile network uh, operators for mobility or fixed wireless access for the WISP space or or you know some of the bigger um, uh, uh, wireless guys that are doing some of these uh, augmentations or the cable companies um, <clears throat> When you're working with your designs, you have to look at your coverage model. What are what are you trying to solve uh, with your overall objective of that design of the network? So as you're looking at the models, you have to take into account high capacity locations. You know, as you identify where your uh, uh, centralization of population are located in small towns, little pocket areas, uh, maybe it's around stadiums those type of things you have to take into high capacity uh, type of situations, which will be influenced by the type of antenna selection that you have, you know? So, uh, you know, you could be looking at using 
uh, you know, 33 or 45 degree beam width antennas with four to six sectors in a, in a higher capacity location. Or it could be that in a, in a hot, real high capacity uh, situation, you use small cell type of applications, which puts the coverage lower and closer to your uh, constituents that uh, need the coverage. When you start looking at lower capacity cell sites, uh, you know, maybe you're looking at just a standard three sectored cell site that that uh, requires uh, like a 65 or a 90 degree antenna or pot potentially even, you know, maybe 120s, uh, depending on what your uh, what type of network you're designing to your coverage area that you're trying to accomplish and then also uh, technology, you know, what uh, what type of technology are you putting on to your wireless network? Um, and then maximizing coverage, you know, so, uh, you know, are you looking to expand your footprint out? Are you trying to cover something maybe with a, with a single radio type of a solution where you need a pseudo omni or a back to back type of solution that allows you to cover up and down corridors or Maybe you're you're out in the rural area and you're trying to reach as far as possible you want, so you go with higher gain antennas. So all of those attributes really influence antenna selection. <clears throat> Another item is future expansion. You know, as you're looking at your your overall coverage areas, you have to take into account: Do I anticipate future expansion or future capacity needs? Um, you know, options for addressing those or is adding more radios on your existing sectors. Or you go in and you do some cell splits or maybe sector split type of thing. So as you look at your uh, your coverage areas, again, you, you kind of try to take those type of things into account uh, as a potential relief mechanism, you know, two, three, five years out. The zoning and site approvals. Uh, you know, this area here is, as Sam talked about earlier, is very kind of near and dear to our hearts about, okay, you know, deployment matters. Well, deployment matters because zoning and uh, site restrictions um, are getting tighter and tighter because of, you know, as he says, you know, the visual pollution. You know, people are complaining more about all of the different stuff being hung on poles and those type of things. Um, and what we're finding in this industry is that, you know, homogenous type of approaches seem to be more adapted or more receptive uh, from a zoning perspective. Um, so they're really looking for a very clean, very aesthetic type of things. So uh, we've taken that, uh, those type of requirements and created a few solutions, which we'll talk about here shortly. Uh, cost and complexity of install. So it's, uh, you know, those, those are key things from an operator standpoint. Uh, when you're looking to do your deployments, you know, you're trying to drive down cost, you're trying to reduce complexity. Um, so when we look at those, uh, we, we kind of put on our operational mindset and we take those into account and try to stitch that together. Uh, one of the areas that Alpha Wireless brings to the table for our customers is that uh, we have a, a very operational mindset. And, uh, you know, I personally have uh, 25 plus years in the wireless industry, 16 and a half doing development for Sprint. So um, we know all about these trade offs between cost, complexity, time in the market uh, type of things. And we, we really take that into account. And then lastly, but definitely not least, is the technology partners. You know, how, how do you partner with different technologies and, and how do these pieces come together? So designing a network for LTE is totally different than for like a Cambium radio or a Telrad or, or a, a Mimosa radio type of solution. So those all come together uh, and the, the type of antennas that you use for those solutions can vary. But the good thing is we have a very large portfolio in this area. Key attributes within the antenna field uh, that really you know come into play are, you know, from a, what type of antenna do I do use? Do I use a fixed tilt antenna? Do I use a mechanical electrical tilt or do I use an electronic remote electrical tilt? So, um, you know, the, the fixed tilt type of solutions uh, or, you know, they're kind of a, uh, you know, they're a lower end, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. They actually perform very well, but you're really, from a from an RF perspective, you really limit 
from our recommendation, you limit your what the amount of tilt you can put into them. Uh, we advise that you don't uh, exceed uh, the tilt beyond 50% of your vertical beam width. So uh, once you get beyond that, you start running into some RF splashing issues uh, into your neighboring sectors, neighboring cells. Um, when you when you do need that um, tilt capabilities that uh, are a little more aggressive, then you go to either a, a MET unit or an ERET unit. Those particular products are really designed to pull back the coverage in a very uniform manner. So um, how you do that is through uh, integrated phase shifters within the antennas. So our MET units have a, a manual knob in the bottom that allows you to to adjust it and with a uh, mechanical, what we call a dipstick on the bottom that actually shows you how much tilt you have into the antenna to pull that coverage back to reduce interference or get more capacity in a particular location. ERET is uh, a, the same thing as the MET except for it has uh, the additive function of allowing you to remotely adjust it so you don't have to put a tower climber up there uh, if you uh, uh, so desire. And you can actually control these uh, through a centralized system if you use a fully integrated uh, standalone RET uh, controller system that integrates from an IP network. All the RET stuff is controlled through an AISG standard. Uh, we're currently compliant with 2.0, um, and then 3.0 is coming out next year, but uh, we will actually be looking at those features at that time. Sam, it's yours. Sorry, that's what happens when you mute yourself. <laughs> I just started talking. So uh, thanks, Tim. Um, yeah, and you know, if there's any questions around those things, feel free to to, to uh, drop us a line or uh, post something on the on, in the question um, spot on your on your call. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the CBRS solutions that we have. So one of the things about Alpha Wireless is we are uh, uh, we've been doing uh, what now is called CBRS, but we've been doing three five spectrum antennas since the very inception of the company. So uh, it's a new, it's not a new spectrum. It just happens to be something that is relatively new or will be available to us here in the US and then uh, next year in Canada. So if you're if you're thinking about using CBRS uh, or, or deploying in CBRS, if you've got private LTE or, or something like that that you're looking at, uh, we have, uh, we actually do have the widest selection of solutions out there in the marketplace today. Uh, we have Pseudo Omni, we've got CANs, which are concealed antenna nodes, which we'll talk about in a second. We've got panel and beam forming, trisector, uh, we've got it integrated into our trisector canisters, and then we even have cable strand mounted solutions. And so really uh, across uh, a broad array of products, we have uh, a, a great selection of antennas. Um, and so um, what we have, and we will be sending this uh, presentation out, uh, but um, in, this just gives you a sense of all the different types of CBRS solutions uh, antennas that we have. And so this is not a full list, but this is a list of, of some that are available. And, and as Tim was talking about previously, you know, we do have fixed tilt variants, we have uh, MET variants, and we have ERET variants. And so, um, you know, depending on what you want to do and how as a company you're deploying, uh, you know, and, and making use of, of antennas in your network, uh, we would have solutions, I think, that will meet your needs. And so whether those are macro site or they're small cell site, uh, we have solutions in those spaces. And then there are people that have uh, spectrum uh, across a couple of different bands. And in those cases, we have antennas, uh, just a couple of examples here, but we have a, a wide array of products that have that are multi-band and so uh, or again if you have spectrum in one band and you're looking at adding cbrs uh, we have solutions that you'd be able to uh, you know acquire that would get you ready for deployment in cbrs as well so uh, this uh, actually have links to your data sheets so if there's something that you're interested in let's say you want a four port 90 degree uh, beam width uh, you can just click on that and it'll actually pull up our data sheet for you. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to step into the canister products. And so, Tim, if you want to just kind of walk through kind of what we do um, and what's included in the canisters, appreciate it. Yes. So uh, canisters are something that's becoming a little more popular in the industry. Uh, just again, due to the aesthetics aspects of trying to conceal a cell site and uh, make make it not so obtrusive. Um, this particular Altaflex line is uh, one that we've created that uh, is really designed toward, uh, you know, trying to make it look like it's already in your typical surroundings, whether it looks like a little bit of a exhaust stack coming out of a, a building, which is what uh, uh, this company here did. Uh, over in Europe, or you put it on a flagpole, you know, a, un a monopole type of structure that integrates completely with it, that makes it look like a flagpole. Uh, we actually have some that do have flagpole or flag mounting capabilities on it, where it could go just residing on, on the top of a building and, and place a, a beacon light or something on top of it to, uh, to signify those things. Uh, the uh, uh, the systems are really designed to minimize the diameter and uh, maximize the amount of, of antenna arrays in this one. So this particular unit here for this European customer was actually, it's an it's a equivalent to nine antennas um, and it allows them to uh, put 4G, 5G across uh, three different bands. So they were doing the low band, mid and uh, three and a half gigahertz. Uh, in the in the European space, there uh, we have capabilities of uh, integrating up to 5G in them as well. So anything that you want to mix and match, our designs are very modular in, in nature. So once uh, once we have uh, the, the actual blocks designed, uh, almost think of like a Lego block type of thing, then when our engineers can quickly migrate those into different solutions, um, which is an area that we pride ourselves over our competition is that we have the control being a small company to be able to do prototype whiteboard to prototype in 90 days or less uh, and, and provide a tier one high quality PIM rated antenna ready to go. All right, thanks Jim. Okay, so we'll uh, step into some of our concealment products. And again, this isn't a, a, a full product suite, but really kind of the, 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 the way and the approach that we are taking in this space. So take it away, Tim. Yeah. So uh, we touched on it earlier about, you know, the, the complexities with dealing with uh, zoning and, and uh, um, jurisdictions on deployments. Um, we were approached by uh, uh, Sprint when they were a standalone company and they were having challenges with trying to deploy some of their small cells, they were getting a lot of pushback from the fact that they had an antenna, they had a radio, they had backhaul, they had power, GPS, they had all these different elements bolted to a pole and it, you know, it frankly looked a little bit gaudy. Um, so we sat down, we worked with them, we came up with what we call our concealed antenna node product line here now. Uh, the one on the left-hand side here is a completely integrated high-power pseudo-omni solution that has the backhaul, wireless backhaul systems in it, power, surge protection, everything all in one can. So that particular unit is really designed toward uh, your small cell solution that allows you to get you into pole tops or even the sidearm bracket, which we'll show you shortly. Um, as we were working with, uh, with them on this particular approach, the question came up was, uh, and this is an area that's kind of near and dear to the WISPA market, is there's a clause in the FCC uh, 1996 uh, report and order about OTARD, and OTARD is a, a provision in there that allows um, for the deployment of over-the-air receiving and transmitting devices to be placed on the rooftop of a location without even having to go to planning and zoning as long as it's less than one meter in diameter and there's no additional rents associated with it. So what uh, what Sprint asked us to do is could we modularize this uh, can into a format to get them to do that? We did. Um, it allowed them to basically go out and deploy those on a lot of their Sprint stores where they were having coverage or performance issues. Um, 
and it allowed him to do it without going to zoning. Uh, and, it, and it took him longer to actually get the uh, licensed electrician to get the, the power up to the location versus us, you know, delivering that product to him and setting it up. Uh, the, the one on the right, the shroud was a derivative of this as well. Um, this was allowed Tim to place antennas at a higher mast center point and um, allow them to, uh, you know, be able to put that antenna anywhere from a directional antenna up to a pseudo omni type antenna, allowing them to drop that mount down to the or the shroud down at a lower uh, elevation uh, due to aesthetics again. Hey, Tim, uh, before we jump into the next bit, there was a question from Catherine Spence uh, asking about beam forming and um, was wondering if you could just talk through um, how we do or the, the antennas that we have, because we hadn't actually mentioned that, uh, but if you could just talk about the beam forming antennas that we have and how we do that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, good question, Catherine. Um, yeah, so beam forming antennas, uh, you know, as it's an eight port uh, solution. And it's made up effectively of four arrays of slant polarized 45 elements. Um, and way, the way we work with the OEMs is that when we build them, we actually build the products, we test them, and we calibrate them in our labs. And then uh, once we get that calibration, we actually uh, provide that calibration file to the radio OEM. The radio OEM then takes that information and they have a process where they upload that um, phase information into their radio. So once that information is populated in their radio, that now their radio is uh, knowledgeable about the array, and um, now they know how to offset and calibrate to be able to do beam forming that TM8 or TM9 uh, type of activities when they need to engage it and how it gets positioned uh, throughout the coverage areas. Hopefully right. that answers your question for you. It sounded good to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, moving back to the uh, concealment solutions, and Catherine, if that doesn't answer your question, uh, feel free to drop us a line, and we'll take that off, and uh, we can talk in depth with you about that. Yes, definitely. I I did all the uh, beam farming stuff for Sprint during that time period. So um, on the concealed antenna node, so here on the left, we show you a, 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 a drawing of how we do the sidearm bracket. Um, that particular bracket can mount to either a wood pole or a metal pole. Uh, we have provisionings for uh, strap mounting, uh, drilling, or a combination of both. Um, you know, again, what I was uh, discussing earlier about how do we solve that problem? This is our this is a view of our second generation concealed antenna node. Uh, the, the previous one we showed was a single band unit. Uh, we still do that with customers. We have one that we're building right now for a TELUS in uh, Australia. Um, this one here is, was designed toward uh, helping other tier one operators and folks that have uh, a plethora of, of spectrum. You know, as capacity increases, more and more operators have spectrum across different bands. So we figured out a way to modularize our, our systems down into a Again, it's less than one meter in height on this particular solution. Uh, it kind of carries uh, the ability to do our the mid-band, CBRS, and LIA. Um, we'll talk a little bit in, uh, about another one designed towards the WISP that allows you to go in and do uh, Wi-Fi activities. Um, so this one here, um, we're showing here that we have three Ericsson 22 series uh, radios or the 44 series radios can can be easily uh, integrated into this to cover all three of those bands at once. Um, the power uh, has a protection box inside of it that has all your breakers. It has surge protection so that way you're you're protecting your your network assets there. And then the the, the actual mount bracket itself, we have it set up so this particular unit. Whereas before where we were, you had two different SKUs to do rooftop or pole. This one here can be done rooftop or pole off of one SKU. Again, so it, it reduces the number of SKUs that you need to be able to put in your inventory in order. Um, key attributes to this is that when it delivers to you, 
it comes as a package. So all you have to do is order this particular unit, which comes with all of your, like again, your power, your, your service protection, it comes with the RF cables, it comes with uh, uh, the interface cable or interface connector for your AC connection on the bottom of the can itself. So uh, the only thing required from the operator standpoint is what radios do you want to use, what backhaul do you want to use, and then a, a actual um, breaker disconnect that comes from the lower part of the tower up to the, the unit, uh, which is typical standard stuff. Here's the here's the RCAN. This particular solution, if you order the RCAN version of it, uh, comes with uh, the like the 3698. Plus, it comes with a non-penetrating skid mount unit uh, to your size. There's we have a couple different sizes. We have a small form factor unit that's about four foot by four foot that has a, a larger loading per square foot, or we have one that's a little over 10 foot by 10 foot that really dramatically spreads the load across the rooftop in case of the, the roof's not um, uh, engineered for that type of weight. Okay, um, here's, here's a, uh, the WISP can that we've uh, worked on where it's in prototype stage now. Um, this one here is designed, you know, with the thoughts of, okay, hey, how do we uh, get into and do uh, a, you know, potentially point to multi-point uh, type of solutions on the bottom, you know, do a LTE, MIMO solutions on, on it, as well as look at doing uh, optional microwave backhaul radio. So um, this can, this particular can here will exceed that one meter uh, requirement because of the fact that, uh, you know, you have to take into account uh, extensions on the top and the bottom to be able to account, accommodate, you know, the additional radio hardware. Um, but again, the modularity of how we've taken the approach of this is that <clears throat> we have a, a solution that would actually come in and allow you to mount a platform on top that allows the, for uh, the integration of a microwave radio solution on top with a concealed uh, you know, canister unit that goes over the top of it to hide everything. And then we also have an expansion module on the bottom that would allow you to do a, you know, a point to multi-point solution like a mimosa or, or something like that that would go in there. Um, and then you would still have the capability of doing you know, LTE radios in the center um, of the unit or maybe uh, if you're a cambium operator, you put cambium radio in there type of thing. So again, we, we, we like to partner with our, our clients, understand what they have and come up with uh, solutions. What's the real driver behind this? And this is where, you know, where we kind of separate ourselves from our competitors that we took all that information, we figured out a way to try to drive out cost and complexity of, of, of your deployments. So we built a business model. We actually went through and added in sprints uh, physical numbers that actually came out of the trials. Um, the trials actually showed a substantial reduction in cost. It, it showed a 56% reduction in their overall cost to do a small cell, uh, which is huge. Um, what drove a lot of that was purely from the reduction in labor cost because of the solution uh, doesn't require you to do a bunch of on-site work. Um, everything on this solution can be put together, tested, and verified in a, in a warehouse environment before it even goes out to the field. Um, you know, some of the biggest challenges when it comes to this, uh, site deployments are weather, you know, whether it's wind, rain, you know, even sunshine, you know, it's, it's a really super hot day. Um, and they are trying to build cables, custom cables on site, and those type of things. That, that's very costly because it takes a unique skill set to do those things. And you run into quality and time issues. Um, this particular solution actually allowed uh, them during the prototype stage to reduce the amount of time by 50%. Uh, the contractor we were working with, when we got done, he was very confident that he was going to be able to do more than two a day. He was looking at that he could do three a day easy. Um, one of the uh, uh, last things about the CAN solution is that when we did the trial with Sprint, uh, Sprint actually had some sites located already and, and uh, approved by the uh, jurisdiction in Columbus, Ohio. When they took this in as a request to do a trial with this particular request, 
they, we, they were actually able to take it in and within 30 minutes, they were not only approved to go ahead and do the trial at a particular location, the council actually asked them to go ahead and change their other uh, deployments to this particular solution. So they got a current block, you know, um, approval process in, in allowing them to go do that. So it was a very win-win across the board. All right, thanks, Tim. So um, from a small cell perspective, again, we'll, we'll just talk real briefly about some of the solutions we have here. Um, it, it really depends on the individual deployments that you would be about, uh, what specifically you're looking for. Um, but ultimately, these are going to be, you know, as we describe them, ultra compact antennas, generally no more than two feet tall. We have some that are even less, uh, depending on what you're looking for. And, uh, and this would be a great example of, of one that uh, both fits the small cell space, the multi-carrier, multi, well, multi-band, and also some of the innovation that we did to deliver the solution. So, uh, Tim, if you want to talk about this, because I think you lived this one, lived it out, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is, a, a, this is another good, uh, you know, showcase of our partnership with our, with our clients. Uh, we were approached by a neutral host vendor. Um, in the October time frame of, uh, hey, we've got a problem. We have to have coverage issues around the Mercedes-Benz uh, Stadium in Atlanta. Uh, we need five different frequencies across uh, 10 different ports. Uh, can you make it happen and make it PIM rated? Um, so we sat down with them. We got all the requirements together. And we were able to, in that, uh, within 90 days, put together an antenna that met all of those needs, we PIM tested them, and we're actually able to uh, ship them 100 units uh, that were deployed all around the location. And as uh, as they were actually installing and integrating the solutions down there, um, there were other tier one operators that were in the same area trying to solve the same problems. And when they found out about the solution, we actually ended up getting uh, um, additional orders from them because of the fact of how compact it is. This is kind of hard to tell, but that antenna right there is 24 inches tall uh, and roughly about uh, uh, 12 inches wide. So it's a very small uh, antenna that, that integrated everything together into one form factor. So uh, it was a, another very good uh, uh, example of how we do these things. All right. So uh, just without giving specific model numbers, and, and if you're ever interested in, in identifying specific model numbers, I can go out to our website, um, look under small cell, and then as you, uh, as you go into that, you'll see multiple different types of antennas. They'll tell you, as you, uh, as you uh, go over them, they'll give you the details about the particulars of the antenna. But we do have 20. 20 port, we even have 24 port um, small cells. So these these here are all two foot tall antennas. So we've got the, uh, we've got 20 port with MET. So that would be the mechanical electrical tilt options on some of the bands. Uh, we've got uh, 10 port, we've got 10 port Omni uh, with a 360 degree um, uh, beam width. We've got eight port ERET. So you've got remote control. And we've got even uh, back to back uh, 120 degree separation and even single sector in a canister format. So, again, if you went out like we were talking before, if you wanted a homogenous uh, approach, so you're always putting the same size canister on a small cell, uh, we have multiple different variants within that that you could change out the, the band, the spectrum, uh, the, you know, the number of ports, and even the, the uh, the, the beam width on it and but they would always look the same so again something that we're doing to really help our our end customers be able to uh, deploy things that look consistent and are easier to get zoning approval on so uh lastly we're we've got uh we're always innovating uh we're always working with our customers uh and so tim being our lead with the tech uh, with our tech groups and our research and development, if you could just talk a little bit about some of the things that we're doing, and then we'll talk about one product in specific, specifically here as we uh, as we close. So, go ahead, yeah. Tim. All right, thanks, Sam. 
Yeah, so uh, within the wireless industry, you know, there's a lot of companies that have very complex um, long-term roadmap type of views. And, you know, that's really required for, you know, people making active devices. Uh, you know, one of the one of the nice things about the antenna area is that, you know, it's not near as complex. And especially for us as a small, nimble type of company, uh, we don't really have to, to uh, you know, do long-term forecasting on type of roadmaps and stuff like that, so like, like some of the bigger guys do. Um, but what I do from this standpoint is I really keep an eye on the industry, um, really see where the FCC is taking things, look where the customers are, are looking to deploy, take a lot of information from questions and, and from trade shows and stuff like that. And we create our own uh, kind of our own little unique uh, approach to, you know, increasing our portfolios. Um, so, you know, areas that, you know, have come to light here, you know, in the in the near future and where we are actually investing is uh, we're expanding our, our our low band portfolio now to, to go uh, what used to be 698 all the way down to uh, 617. So that way it covers a lot of the low bands. Uh, another thing uh, we do is we're doing this since we are a global company. We actually look and see what's going on in Europe, in Southeast Asia, you know, Australia, those type of things, and we take those into account. So as we look at our solutions, we're trying to expand those up to cover as many as possible, uh, but still meet the needs of our customers in those areas. Uh, one of the big things, and kind of fell right in our uh, crosshairs for us as CBRS, is that. Alpha Wireless was built basically on developing 2.5 and 3.5 antennas back in 2007. Uh, so when CBRS came about, you know what, you know it was a, a win for us from the standpoint of there's nobody in the industry that has many uh, solutions as we do. But one thing what we're finding out is, you know, within the industry, people are wanting to use different solutions in different ways. So we're continually to look in that, at those, you know, applications. How do we change form factor type of things? Um, expand it now that, uh, you know, the, the spectrum up to 4.2 is being sought after. We're investing into expanding to 4.2, and we're already covered down to 3.3. If there's uh, uh, evolution to 3.1, we'll actually look to go to the 3.1 all the way up to 4.2 range. Um, Another area is, you know, the above six gig level. So we've already started looking to invest in the appropriate test equipment and, and uh, uh, products that would allow us to uh, later part of this year, early part of next year, expand our product portfolio to go all the way up to 7.125 gigahertz. Um, and, you know, we constantly get, you know, the fact that more and more companies are using more and more spectrum. So um, the need more port counts. So we're figuring out ways to interleave, you know, the, the different arrays. So we actually have uh, designed and developed some new, what we call cloaking technology that allows us to put low band elements in with uh, higher band elements below it and behind it and make it look invisible to the patterns, which is very critical from an operation standpoint and RF design standpoint and that we continue to evolve our concealment solutions. Um, so, you know, as you look at those different items, we go, how do we do these things? Well, uh, Sam, let's, can we go to the next slide? Yeah. One, one of the things that we've done is that we were approached by one of the WISPs about, uh, you know, expanding the ability to do multi-sector cambium radio uh, deployments. They were wanting to do cell splits like we were talking about earlier you take into account your expansion uh, currently today cambium offers an integrated antenna radio solution but they don't have a, a, a split beam solution that allows you to put multiple radios onto a single antenna you know so working with them you know if you put two separate antennas with two separate radios up there your opera or your um, site act companies, you know, want to charge you additionally for those substantially. You know, all the tower codes say, oh, well, that's a different attachment. Okay, your rent went up by X. In this particular instance, they had negotiated, um, you know, a, a size and 
within that size, as long as they stayed within that size, they don't have to worry about uh, increasing the rents as high. So what we've done is we took uh, those requirements, we, we have now integrated the EPMP 3000 radio into the back of the antenna. So this particular solution will come with actually two sectors that are actually uh, uh, can't slant at 60 degrees from each other. So that way you can do uh, a full 360 uh, across three of these panels. Uh, it will come with the cambium uh, cover that will cover the radio on the top like they do, do today. And then they also will come with um, all of the jumpers that are required to interconnect it. It will actually have uh, the electrical down tilt bracket that's included with it. And uh, or I should say the fixed tilt bracket that comes with it and it supports dual four by four MIMO. So this is a really, it's an innovative solution. This is gonna be something once we launch it, will be available through double radius as an orderable solution in the very near future. And lastly, just a couple of points to consider as you're as you're uh, thinking about why you might want to uh, use alpha antennas compared to some of the others. And I'll ask Tim to talk about it because he's he's better at describing the specific technical differences. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know when you're looking at the RF systems and stuff, you know, um, you know. One of the things we do, again, is that we really try to innovate and, and drive um, changes in, in the, our antennas. So when we're designing our antennas, we know that interference is a big issue. So when we're designing our, our, our units, we're, we're really focused on you know, suppressing those upper side lobes. So when you do go in and start using some, some down tilt, if you're not suppressing those upper side lobes, you're now putting energy out into your adjacent cells, which is not uh, not very good. Or when you get into like two and a half gigahertz range, um, your upper side lobes can actually skip and cause interference hundreds of miles away uh, to other networks. So it's very critical to suppress those type of things. And so, you know, reducing interference is critical and it, those are thoughts put into our designs. Um, improving the coverage, you know, again, you know, really looking at overall quality, making sure the, the performance of the antenna, front to back ratios, isolation, port to port isolation, all those things are taken into account. Um, you know, just looking at when you're doing the optimization, you know, making sure we have the portfolio solutions that our operators need is critical. So, you know, we're, we're constantly looking at okay, how can we do tilt options better, more efficient? Um, you know, when we're looking at that, like we're one of the things we're doing now is we're designing and, uh, and integrating a brand new phase shifter for our uh, electrical tilt units for the mechanical electrical and the remote electrical uh, that will allow you to uh, reduce the amount of loss inside of the antenna and um, allow you to, uh, you know, have better granularity in your optimization processes there. And all the while we're doing that, we have to always keep cost in mind because we know this is a competitive market space. So, you know, we look at ways of trying to uh, innovate in this area where we can actually reuse as many products as we can between our different uh, product lines to help us drive down our, our uh, supply chain costs. Um, if there are any questions that you do have on the back side of this, uh, you can feel free to reach out to Byron um, and to the folk at Double Radius, um, and they can forward those to us, or you can contact us directly. Tim and I are, are both here based uh, in, in the U.S. We happen to both be based in Kansas City, but uh, we're happy to answer questions and uh, provide whatever we, get, whatever we help we can. And if you've got needs for custom solutions that you haven't seen, um, we are the company to talk to. So please uh, feel free to reach out to us with, uh, with any unique needs that you might have. Uh, Byron, back to you. All right, thank you Sam and Tim again for taking the time to jump on there. Uh, again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or uh, to them directly, their contact info will be sent out on the slide deck. 
uh, following this. But um, And if you would, if everyone would hang out for just a second, we'll send you a very quick survey. And if you'll take a few moments and answer that, it'll you know help us with the feedback for presentations like this. But again, thanks again to Sam and Tim and for everyone for your time.